Hello. Um, so we're just going to continue with the turtle graphics language interpreter thingy with the goal being to write a simple language to control a turtle graphics program. Um, and we shall see where we left off. It was only last night, so it won't be too much. Ah oh, yes, I just added the line number thing. Um, just commit that last change, we start fresh. And then there's only one solution file. So I'm going to need my glasses because I'm an old man. Uh, so that's not the world's best <laughs> testing, robust testing, but it just tests that we can parse some tokens. Um, what we're going to do now is uh, add a test for the parser. I see my VSM is having cactus. Test parser. So we're going to uh, Grab this. So we've got Alexa. We'll change this to be. Uh, one thing I wanted to look at, I thought about, was this thing. So this is our current input test thing. And we're going to just update this a bit to be pen down, repeat for, rotate 90, move 100. And then quit. <clears throat> and we will be adding variables and other control flow things. So we'll be able to say like m equals 100 and then move m. Stuff like that. Um, but for the moment we just want to get... Basically my first goal is to get this working as it looks, because uh, it includes a code block and it includes um, repetition and later run related variables and so on. So pen down, repeat for move 100, uh, rotate 90, move 100, Um, now notice that there's no end of line things, so this can all be one line, just to keep it simple, and to keep the syntax simple. Uh, so we've got our Lexa that we know, what well, we know, works to an extent. We might have to go back and do some uh, fixing, I mean, it needs things like negative numbers, it needs, uh, we're going to need the parser in here as well. And we'll need the 
Jeez, it sort of sucks not having refactoring tools, I'll be honest. I'll probably fix I'll start to fix that before I do the next video. Um so we want the parser to be created given a const reference to a uh, Lexa. And we might as well do this in line. The Lexi will never change. Actually, all of these things will want to have, and I realized I was being an idiot the other day. <laughs> I kept doing the same thing, expecting different results. I was keep kept going C++ class, which would create header and header and source file in the root directory, and I was just complaining about something that was my fault completely. So we want to create a new header file in include processor I'm just going to call it process base um, because all of these things the parser the lexa the translator the executor are all things that can fail they need a run method they've got common functionality so I'm just going to factor that out into a common thing called process base. Um, and we'll add a similar source file to source called process base CPP. I remember when CPP used to be XPP, or when it used to be CXX. I don't know why they chose. I think CXX because it was like plus plus rotated 45 degrees. You don't see that much anymore. Um, so we'll just add that as well. It's going to grab our template and yank the whole thing and put that into process base. We'll include, include process base and we'll go to it ah, I accidentally press build but we'll just check that it builds I guess let's go to document f12 um, This would be, I'm going to use struct because I'm a, I'm a maverick. Um, and this is going to have, actually, I'm not going to use glass because I want to default to private. Um, no, actually, I want to be uh, protected. Whether or not it's failed. A string for the error message and now that this does this use what was it control shift G it does use pregnant ones so there's a difference just as an aside using guarding like guarding like this if not def string, define string, and then do all of this. Blah, 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 blah. All right. And then end if the string. Now that's just the guarding against having it included twice, right? But the thing is that it, the compiler's still got to parse the rest of the file. It's got to parse this, parse this, and then parse the rest of all of this file just to reject it at the end. That, if it's a smart compiler, it'll sort of just try to match up the the end ifs, like and not parse all of this. I don't know. And then they used to. Maybe they're smarter now, and they won't. My point is that if you pregma once at the top, 
which all compilers support now. It used to be just Microsoft. So it was a Microsoft thing at first, but now all compilers support it. Intel, IBM, Clang, GCC, Visual C, all of them support broken ones. As soon as the compiler comes across this, it just stops parsing the file. Gone. So it's generally faster to use prep and once than the old school way of doing it. That's a complete aside. But what it does mean is that it's sort of a bit safer now to include um, string or whatever in every file that needs it. Uh, because if, if you're including it multiple times, it won't slow you down as much as it used to in the past. Complete historical aside. But hey. Uh, and we also want um, this to be public. Uh, virtual bool run. So make a, a pure virtual method that has to be implemented. Um, we'll add a uh, has failed and just for funsies has succeeded and another protected uh, area here down here for fail No, we just, it should, it'll eventually be a um, stream, so you can stream into it. Uh, I just want a basic thing for the minute that I can... ...use to quickly... ...and then you probably just want a uh, reset. where fail equals false and the uh, error dot clear now if you're going to be all enterprisey about it you probably add a common a common logging system to this as well but I think we're being enterprisey enough just by having a <clears throat> common base for all our processes. But in general, you do want a logging system. You don't want to just print the standard out, standard error. You don't know where you'll be in the context of when the app will be eventually run, where your output streams will be. So, we want our Alexa now to derive well, for a start, it'll include um, process base and derive from process base. And because it's a class, it defaults to now. Do I need to explicitly override that? I guess not. I think I can add override, right? Over right. I think it's optional, but just to make it clear that this is overriding. Again, we're getting into this areas that it's a bit new. We'll just see what run does here. If I need to, I need to say that this is override as well. No, nope. I certainly don't, but we will do base.run as a general. Uh, process base.
Now that's not gonna work because So we could now do a reset here. So that will call the process basis reset, which will clear any error messages. Uh, one thing we'll need to do is to sort of jump around here a bit, but I'm also going to change Cha cha uh, cha. Current equals get current, and change that to be current, and all of these other ones as well, so that we don't always get current. Otherwise, if we fail the other two top things, we can switch on the current. And if it's an open brace, return add token. Uh, we just want to add a brace token, a token. Open brace, comma one and four. Close brace. And please tell me it knows I can refactor that. Okay, so we need to do two things. We need to go here and say um, open brace and close brace, and we need to have an add token. token type and size t length and we need to add this this is a tedious part about c plus uh, c plus c plus plus a tedious part is the whole source header thing we should get fixed soon. This implies to me I should swap the ordering of these. So have the token type first. Let's not say we did. Clean it up later. So here we want to return add token string splice of this line number offset and length and then token type will be type just makes it easy to add a token and if later on if you've got tokens that are two characters long we can just change that one to a two and now we'll just uh, go back to our main test because I needed to add that so that we can parse these braces uh, sorry lex the braces braces so we'll just build Geez, I need to add a pre-compiled header or something Maybe we'll do that next Because the earlier we do things like that 
um, the more value we're going to get. Parser, parser, given a const reference to Alexa. Um, just make sure that builds, and then we'll add the p the precompiled headers. And we'll check that it runs first as well. So all good, and we'll just check that in before we add the precompiled header. Uh, git add everything and push it called um, add process base. I saw JACP is is a macro uh, alias I made for git bash shell for git add everything and then commit to a new uh, commit make a new commit with that message and then push it um, and yes I could be using this stuff and I probably should but whatevs so the first thing we need to do is um, Now, should we pre-compile everything or just the processor? So you can have multiple include... We'll just add one for the processor. A header file, and we'll call it processor pch. And we want it in include not source. Now, it's been a while since I've done this, so let's see how how well I remember. And then we want to have a new item here, C++ file. I called it .h, I'm annoying. Um, source. So this header file that I called that, let's rename it to HPP. And then on our project, we want to have pre-compiled headers Ah, uh, we only want to have it for these files Can I do that? So, so this is Use precompile headers through process or pch.hpp and then it'll be target name dash processor in case we want multiple. PCHs, and we'll just grab this. So these will all use the, the PCH. This one, we want to create the PCH through that, and it's going to be in processor slash processor p c h h p p god typos annoy me so much so we will apply that so that creates the precompile header that uses ah so all these ones actually have to go through processor slash and that is you create through that use through that and all we do now is for this to uh, include processor processor dot uh, pch dot hp 
And then this just wants to include everything that we want to um, have pre-compiled. Um, so that'll be that. The Lexa, the parser, the translator, the executor, and token. String splice executor. So the way this works, I don't know if you want me to go into too much detail, but I guess the point of this is to go into as much detail as I wish. So now what happens is the compiler knows that this file uses a precompiled header file. That precompiled header file is built by compiling this file. This file includes this, which then includes all of these, and then builds a .pch file, which precompiles all of these headers into one file. So then when it comes to the Lexa, when you include everything, it's um, muzzle stick cert into here as well. Um, it just means we won't be parsing all these files all the time. We'll only do it once. So we want a cert. We always need string and vector and map and algorithm. It doesn't really matter what you put in here because it only gets compiled once. And it only gets recompiled if any of those change. So we can go nuts a bit. So then if I build, if I just say if I build, so the first thing it does is it builds the PCH file. Now, and this is saying that the first thing you need to do when a file is listed as using PCH is the first thing it has to do is include that file. It's a bit redundant to have to, to then include the actual. Uh, we might as well do this one as well. We added it, so whatever. So now when we build, see how much faster that was. <laughs> um, that was more than it was order of magnitude faster. Two orders of magnitude faster. They're slow because they're not in. They're not in. None of those are in PCH. And then it generates the code for those, and then it generates the code for the. So we could add. This is being fancy pants, but we could add. Uh, and I'm going to. Uh, just PCH HPP. To. Include, so I'm just doing the same thing, but for the top level, these three and anything else that goes with it, which would be like the display. The reason it's a bit slow is because the catch is quite slow. So we'll just quickly do the same thing. So we'll have two pre-compiled header files. And here we want to say that all of these user p compile header file through pch.hpp. And this time you can just use target name because previously we used target name dash processor. So now we can just use target name. So they all use it and then go here, we'll pick this one. We'll say we create it through pch.hpp. HPP, 
make sure that I used HPP for this. I did. So that's all good. And then this thing itself will do things like include uh, SDL. I'll include display, which includes SDL. And what other header files? Really, I guess, I mean, commands can end up in the other one. We don't really need to include anything else. The one bad thing about including mobile, if you put do this for everything, is if you change one of the header files in the PCH, it has to rebuild the PCH for all of them. So, you want to keep it. At least there's another one we could add. In fact, this could even include um, PCH. So you can include the other PCH. And then in the top level PCH, we'll stick in all of these. Click the list. Set map. Oh, already got this there. Algorithm. Uh, it does mean now that the process has got a dependency on display. Don't like that. So I'm going to. Undo that a bit. And just change that so that they're a bit separate. So you could have the, min, the, the inner PCH include the top level PCH, but you're also adding a dependency. So now it'll build this PCH, then it'll build that, and then everything will be much faster again. So we'll clean everything and rebuild. And we didn't with pch.hpp and we need to add that to what yeah no that's right and this also has to now we don't necessarily need to include all of these other ones but we will test main uh, what we do want to do is include pch at hpp, but we want catch to be in the top level pch because that was one of the reasons to do this. <clears throat> and so test main does that. Main includes pch. We we'll just grab that in case we need it. PCH includes PCH, test main includes PCH, and turtle includes PCH. That's going to be a problem. Bloody SDL. And we might just stick a cert into the PCH as well. Yeah, no. <laughs> I might end the stream here because it looks like I screwed up. Because now I've included SDL. Crumbs DM. Can I? It does me can only ever have one? I might even end the stream because I'm going to have to undo all of this just because of catch. Yep.
Oh, the other thing to one last attempt is to stick it in here. This is bad practice. Um, it up offline no it means that everything is see only one file uh, any other way to do it is to remove catch from the PCH and have test main um, not use pre-compiled headers Which sort of sucks because that was a that was the longest. That was the thing that took the longest thing, longest time. So we can say that the catch, the test main doesn't use PCH. But then test main takes ages to build because it's including catch. Nah, I'm afraid there's nothing much I can do about that so everything builds really quick now except could fix that by adding a third PCH but let's not and say we did we're not going to be building that often anyway anyway so I hope you learned a bit about how to use pre-compiled headers so I've got pre-compiled header for this module and a pre-compiled header for the top level, which isn't really necessary. Well, it's not unnecessary. It stops SDL from being built a lot. Now I could take, or we can put this in the PCH. I don't think it would make much difference. Yeah. Test main sucks. So that was a little diversion. But like I said, it's worthwhile to do performance improvement Things the earlier they do them, the more the more benefit you get from get, from doing them. So you want to write the parser. So we require parser dot run. We require spelling dot work. Complaining. Parser has no. Did I not make parser do often process space? Oh. But Lexer includes process space, so I don't need to do that twice. So much faster everything builds. Oh, I haven't built, I haven't added the run method. Cool. Parser. Run. And that's all just the same message again and again. And I need to put it into here. 
Cool. Run. Override. I'm really tempted to put a freaking ball out of test main, but I'm not going to. Because you're already sick of PCH. Um, God, I'm tempted to. I'm not going to. I'll just suck it up. Uh, so now, and now test main. This works. So what will the parser do? Let's look at our graph. Chuck it open. So it needs to build. We've got input text, tokenizer. The parser is given a tokenizer. Right, in our case, Alexa. Same thing. It's gonna you can say Alexa. Um, and then it has to build an an AST. What's an AST? Well, it's an abstract syntax tree. And what it needs is a uh, AST node. So it's a set of nodes. Uh, a vector of Shared pointer to AST node uh, children. So each node has got a set of children that are also AST nodes. Uh, we're going to need an AST node type. Now what I found quite often is that you can actually just use token types for AST node types. We'll see how far that gets us. In some languages, do you want to have like you, you've got your token set, right? Which is the the elements of your language each broken down. It, the, the, the syntactic elements of your language. So if you look at this, the token sequence is pen down, repeat, for, open brace, rotate 90, move 90, close brace, white space, quit. Now this is going to be a AST node. Um, but with a node type of repeat. Now we could just use the token type as the AST node type. Probably not clear what I'm saying. Like typically you if you don't have a like a much a very much a one-to-one -one mapping between the tokens and your AST nodes, you you need to use a, a different enumeration to, to distinguish between them. In this case, we're going to see how far we can get with just a um, e token type field. Um, Can it scope that? You can't scope that. Why can it sometimes scope it and sometimes it can't? It can't. Uh, and we want something like... It's a bit ugly to have these as... Public fields. Add child AST node. We'll use move semantics node. Just wondering if we need to even have shared pointers in here, or if we can just use. No, we need pointers because we can't have an AST node literal in an AST node. It's not legal. 
and if it's going to be a pointer, it has to be a shared pointer because we're using modern day could even add something like for each child standard function uh, void ast node action make it easier later because I'm never gonna want to have to iterate over the children we're never going to want to remove the children now one thing we will want is not a token but an action I mean not a okay Okay. Let's do it a bit better. Um, because we also want this to be made from an E token. Because sometimes we'll want to have um, We want to have just a type, and sometimes we want to have the entire token. Like if it's a if it's a number, we need to know the the string splice for that token, so that we can convert it to a um, I've got all this backwards. That's a type, and that's a token. this in line for the minute or are we yeah we are we just leave it in line with the parser no we're not <laughs> it always happens to be the wrong folder that it wants to go to right uh, ast node.hpp grab the templates and yank everything and AST node will paste everything and we'll delete that we'll go to the parser and we'll grab the AST node paste that in there and this wants to include processor token HPP and I guess we could just include vector how come they didn't get this or oh, I could include the whole lexer yeah but going by That also bring in functional? Does it also bring in shared pointer? Yep. I don't know. I've come to sort of just have, like I said before, have each header file include what it needs. Now, I could sort of include the PCH directly here or something, which I know pulls in a lot of stuff. But then you're just introducing. 
tightly bind, tightly bound collect, uh, I don't know, it's just not as elegant. What I'm saying is you should really just include what you need to make your declaration. Don't over include stuff. Keep your dependencies as short as possible. So an AST node has just got a token and a set of children. You want to have e token get type going to be const and that'll be return token dot type funny um, and standard string get text const return token dot splice dot get text Now using move semantics, this should all make no copies. Once that substring is made, it'll just move it to there. It'll move it to here. That'll move it to there. That'll move it to whatever called get text. So no more const references everywhere and all that nonsense. I believe, I believe it is so. The other option is, I mean the other, I'm not an expert as I've said many times on, I am an expert in C++, trust me, but just not on the latest, like C++ 17, 20, or even 11. But I have been using C++ since like 1990, maybe 1992. be nice to sort of have a bit more uh, understanding of the new stuff which I'm learning like I really like by the way while I'm just rolling a cigarette I was reading this again I really like this in C++ like that so it doesn't look like C++ can I actually remove no I can't remove but I wonder if I remove if I made that Explicitly a standard array of e tokens. Would I need to qualify them? I can't just do that. If I do that, I need to say how many there are, right? Yep. Ah, that sort of sucks. Because I don't want to say how many there are. That's the whole. I wanted to automatically calculate it so I could use expected sign. Okay, back to where we were. Running the parser. So, parser's got Alexa, which has got a series of tokens. Do we need to keep track of, let's split this windows. Um, see, obvious, isn't it funny how obvious things like, I want to be able to drag this window over here. No, I can't do that. I do have to select that. And then it puts it there. I'm such a curmudgeonly old man. Get in there. And why have I got, these standard windows back, my toolbars back. Go away. I took these off before. So we're going to need where we are in the Alexa. Um, current token. Now there's size T and there's standard size T. Are they the same thing? I mean, I know they're the same thing, but are they literally, what is, is that? Well, 
they're not like it's not type def to be and it's 64 bit as well interesting of course the 64 bit machines ah oh, they're using they should be using numeric traits for that i guess this file was written before numeric traits was thing doesn't give the date anyway if we don't need it we're not going to use it so d2 fine colon i could have press delete four times but d2 fine colon is also four piece so the current token in alexa now in our run so we're running our parser we want to have a statement If you look at our commands this is just a series of statements that's a statement that's one statement that's a statement so while statement do nothing so this looks a lot like um, I can use has failed now right it's a bit nicer actually we can return even nicer you can turn has succeeded Oh, I just add the method. Yikes. I'm not used to this. I'm t I use a language that I won't mention a lot at work, which has a different IDE, which I won't mention, which is basically cheating. Like you just type a few things and you go button press, button press, and just generates all this stuff. Which you can also do a bit with C sharp, with ReSharper, and you can do a bit with C++ and ReSharper, but anyway. So this gets a statement. So this will be parser statement. And we need to add it to the header file as well, because we live in Uh, 1993 still. And we need header files. What else are we going to need other than statements? It really is just a series of statements, isn't it? It's going to be pretty simple. This language. I mean, we could have expressions. We'll add it here now in case we want to add expressions later. Um, We really just need a series of statements and maybe expressions. So we'll just make this an empty thing. So now we want to switch. Uh, we want to say if so what are our statements we could just switch on the next token type right uh, switch current token type Why are these even protected? I don't expect anything to ever. Um, 
So we want token and current token. So current token will be const and return lexa a return get tokens at current token. That's a bit confusing because current token sort of implies that it is a token. Nah. Nah. Uh, standard vector of token. Get tokens return lexa dot get tokens. That returns get tokens of current token, current type, return current token dot type. And that's going to be an E token. And we can even while we're here say standard string current token text. Return current token dot splice dot get text. So these are just all query things. Now we do want to have peak on a so we can check ahead to see what the next token is. No error checking at the minute, um, which we're going to need. Return type does not match. Oh. peak dot type equals type. So we want to peak to get the next token. We want to peak to see if the next token is of a given type. Uh, and there's again, no error checking. Although you shouldn't really need any because the next token at the end will be end. It will be none. And if we're at none, then we should never peak to find the next token. We'll see how we go. Without error checking, this is going to be a problem. Well, it's a potential problem because. We could overflow. Um, I 
But wait till to see if it's a problem. I think if I write the code well enough. In the general flow of things. We won't have a problem. So a statement. Root. Switch on the current token type. Case. Pen down. Um, ah, we need a node, uh, AST node root, and it's going to be a standard shared pointer of AST node, and so we'll need to include AST node. And we're going to need to be able to get the root. And we're going to have, we're going to type def this out, type def standard shared pointer of AST node. And we're going to call that AST node pointer. private so this can be a change find that AST node pointer didn't we call that processor AST node where does that loop ah bugger We just want to remove it and we want to uh, yeah we need to move the AST node to processor and then we can add it back in here control shift A include processor AST node all the red squiggles should go away. Private. And this doesn't have to be shared pointer. This is going to be an AST node pointer. Get root const return root. So we're going to run it and then At the end of after running it, <coughs> excuse me, we're just going to have one node at the root and then all of the statements. So the, the root node, <coughs> in this case, there'd be a root node, which is this, and it will have a set of children. Um, and those children there am I really going to do this? Is this bad practice? No, I just decided it wasn't bad practice that means we don't need that. Um, so at the root node, we're going to have, it's going to have children. And those children uh, can I do this even? If I forward declare AST node I should be able to type def that and then I can just say AST node pointer it's nicer isn't it <clears throat> um, and 
that's going to be a function. No, we'll leave that as it is. So we'll dereference it before we pass it. So in this case, we're going to have a root node. Oh, so that's just said six times. And it's going to have one, two, three children in it. So we're going to have a root node and it's going to have three children in here. And those children are going to be pen down, a repeat block and a quit. And the repeat, the re repeat block will have its own children, which will be the number of times to repeat followed by a sequence of statements surrounded by pro, uh, braces. That's the general idea. So we'll go to our parser. So the current token type will just say um, node add child new node of pen down. So we're going to need the parser is going to need a root, but it's also going to need our current because as we, as we descend down and parse this, we're going to have the root. But when we're like in here, we're going to be in a different node context than say here. In fact, we're going to need a stack. I hate using stacks in, I'll try it. Oh God. Um, Cause you're gonna need a stack of nodes. Actually, in that case, do we even need um, a root node? If we just include stack, we can just call this the stack. And then get root will just be the stacks top. Why is that? No said we'll use a defined version from const ast node to to node pointer. Now the thing about stack that's weird in C++ is that you can't iterate over the stack. All you can do is push back and pop back. I don't even know that you can get the size. It's not really a data structure. It's just a, it's a wrapper around a um, standard deck, I think, by Uh, I think it defaults to being a deck, the container to use. I definitely don't need to give it a container. So why hasn't it defaulted to the container to use? Like, where does this... Yeah, but I'm only giving it the type. I'm not giving the content. Anyway, it defaults to being a deck, a DQ. Details you don't care about. You can give it a, you can give it your own container here of whatever you want to use for the actual container that the stack uses. The stack just provides an interface around an existing container. And that interface is quite limited by design to only allow things like push back and pop back. I don't know whether it even allows stack signs. It does allow size. So you can say whether it's empty. Sorry, you can't even push back obviously. You can only push in place and pop and swap with an existing stack and compare stacks. That's your entire interface to a stack. <laughs> so you can see there's no iteration over it. 
there's no get size. Oh, there is a get size. So you can get the size of it until whether it's empty. You can get the top of the stack, you can push, and you can pop. I'm not sure what this means. I know that no except means that it won't throw. I haven't seen this nested syntax of no except, I'll admit it. Pretty cool, I'm sure it's cool. And let's just swap in the containers. <laughs> the container is really called C, is it? That's hilarious. So you can initialize it with the container, and the container is just called C. Yep, <laughs> container is called C. Uh, why not? So I call it that S. Anyway, it's enough mucking around, or not enough. I don't know. Um, so this will be just. Instead of, we need to add child a new node. So we'll put this after expression. So, uh, add child, we'll just take an AST node pointer and it'll just be stack dot top add child node. the same sort of music for multiple reasons but as I mentioned before so the added child just adds it to the top of the stack and add child takes a node it should take an AST node pointer this also needs to be able to get the children but we'll see, maybe for each child means that we don't need to get children. Nah, I think we'll need to get children. I think we'll need to get children. Now that won't use move semantics, so we just want to turn a const reference to our children. Because they can't move the children from inside the AST node to whatever it's called. Um, and new node. And this is just a new node given an E, I've given a token. Token, it's not, actually it is const. In fact, it's static. That returns an AST node pointer. 
And it really, actually, you can use AST node new because this doesn't really need that. We'll just move that into AST node and we'll put static void new. And it's not that, it's an AST node pointer. So the AST node's got a static method called new that will make a new AST node pointer given a token. Which means we need to have a Always the wrong location. AST nodes, it be, be source process us worth double checking. Now we've also got to be careful because this has to use precompile headers through. Do I have to type it every time? That sucks. Processor, processor pch.hpp. I could have just called that pch.hpp actually. Is it worth changing everything? No, you don't care. And this still, oh god, I've got to remember to do this every time. Is that what I call the other ones? Yes. So this uh, in fact we can grab all of this. But we want AST node. And we just need to add these three methods. Static uh, AST node What happened there? Oh, I didn't even, didn't delete that. See when using Vi macros it mucks it up when it has uh, code completion that don't doesn't get included in the macro. So in this case we're gonna use standard make Shared AST node token. And then for each child, so for auto const, doesn't need to be const, it's a shared pointer, but might as well. Auto const reference child in children uh, action on the child. And that's a semicolon. And this is just children. Dots in place back. Node. me why I put decided to put those ones in line and those ones out of line. Uh, this too much is this to me is too much to put in a header file. But then why not put these in the source file now that I've got one? Because basic getters don't really need to be separate. Whereas these are actions. So you might want to like, you know, before you replace back, you might want to assert that node exists. Uh, is there an exists? 
Is it just node.get? You can assert that the node exists. Can you just, has it got a boolean operator? Must have, not that stupid. <laughs> Why is the definition for assert? Not, not. That's just to avoid like overriding if someone's overridden the the um, negate operator. So it negates the negate of the expression. It, it negates the negation of the expression. And it does that or does the actual assert, which is the wide assert. So it uses wide, wide char. And it widens the expression. Uh, it widens the textual representation of the expression and it widens a file and it widens a line. I don't know what the zero is. Message, file, line. Well, I don't know what the zero is. Oh, it just, it's professional. Oh, it's just a, oh, that's fine. It's just casting zero to void, uh, void to zero. Cool. Sorry, I haven't seen, I haven't looked at what the assert looks like in these days. Um, don't need to look at that anymore. Not many people look at uh, standard headers. <laughs> I like to, I like to know what's going on. Uh, this can't fail. Unless action is null. I'm not sure that you can even make a function, an action that's a set action. Oh, it has got an operator bool, so you can assert that it's not a null action. And token, we can't do anything about because it's a value type and it can't fail. The input can't be wrong. It is a token. And we just make a shared AAC node from the token. Now we do need that explicit template argument to make shared. Otherwise it'll just try to make a shared token and not a shared AST node. What it actually does is it uses argument forwarding to forward these arguments to the constructor of AST node and there's a constructor for AST node that just takes a token. Uh, let's check that we build. Build failed. Awesome. Statement must return a value. Uh, who can return false at this point? We can make add child return true. Oh. It's a little trick that I do. I wouldn't, is it a trick? I don't know if it's a trick. But um, it makes a bit more fluent programming because I know I'm going to do this a lot. And this way I can just return a child that hasn't caught up yet. I think that's the only problem. You can catch up. If I build, it'll catch up. Ah, let's parse that add child. Which means that our AST node, I added it to the wrong one. 
That's all. Ah. This is Celine. Thank you for the warning message. <clears throat> Come on, test man, you can do it. I mean, to give you an idea, like, I don't know, I've got a fast 12 core AMD Ryzen and it's taking with 32 gig of DDR4 RAM and I'm using 14 and a half of it somehow. I bet it'll be Chrome or something. So that built, so pen down is pretty simple and I couldn't even make that one line really. And there's a lot of these that are going to be like pen up and that's really actually that's the only two I can think of <laughs> that just taken. That's going to be pen up and pen down. Other ones take arguments, so they need to be. I just changed that to the same thing. Uh, now, if we get a repeat return add, I'll oh, just return repeat. So statement expression. I repeat statements. And uh, move and rotate, I guess. All these new files. Does it? it doesn't do the expand macros properly. And this is parse expression. And so repeats. We if not pick number return false I will return fail number expected and we'll override that and um, provide context so we'll make a no our own fail
which will end up calling the base file, but it'll add in extra context about where it failed and all that, but for the moment. <clears throat> because repeat always expects a number. Now you could argue that you could want to repeat forever and not have a number. Deal with that later. So we parse repeat. And we want this to be return statement. Don't know, I made a couple of statement block. No, we'll say parse because we said parse and everything else. And this will be parser parse statement block. And this needs to be a thing. And then... So the first thing would be a statement block, which is this. Which is just a series of statements. So the run is just a statement block. You could call this statement series statements, past statements, cut in the blocks line. So while we parse statement, we do nothing. When we parse a repeat, when we parse a pen down, we add a child, which adds it to the stack top. So that means that when we construct, we need to have uh, we need to add a child um, uh, AST node new I don't know what do you want to call the root begin top start It's very good to be weird now because that's not really a token. It's a it's a pseudo token. But as I said before, about sometimes there's not a one to one mapping between AST node types and token node types. But it's just easy in this case to add a start token, which is never it's a pseudo token. It's never actually generated in the code. There's no there's no start token in here. But we need a root of the AST tree. So that we can add children to it. And then say so pen down will just add a child to the current thing. Pen up will add a child to the current thing. Parse repeats that. And then we want to add a child AST node new repeat and that needs to return the child that we created ah that's gonna be annoying Okay. Um, the repeat node will be that. Add the repeat node. And then that will Now, we don't want to add, we want to add the child, but now we want to push it as well. So 
so that the top is that. And then if the parse statement block So that'll all go into repeat at this point. Then otherwise we failed. Now we haven't got the number yet yet. Have we added the number? We'll just add the number to uh, repeat dot add child. Um, so that's no longer const. So repeat, add child. So we know that the next thing is a number. We want to add that as a first child to the repeat AST. We know that's a number because it picks already to the ah, next number. Next token. So what this will mean is, so we've got this AST node and it's just say it's the repeat block. The first child will be the number. The second child will be the code block of what to repeat. So add the number make the new node, add the number, we know it's a number because we just picked it, push that to the top of the stack, parse the statement block, and here we need to, if not, expect, open brace, Return false. Actually, we'll call this parse statements because we don't want commands to be wrapped in parentheses. So we want statement block, but also statement sequence. So the statements. So statement block. So parse statements is just a series of statements. But parse statement block, which we haven't written yet, will be parser if not we expect an open brace return false if not parse statements return false and if not 
Clothes Brace. Return false. Otherwise, we've got the whole statement block and then return true. Now we haven't written expect yet. So, pull expect. Uh, a token type. Well, peak is expect. Peak is expect. We don't need that. So, if not. Ah. We do want expect. And it's const. Because we want. And it's not const. Because what we want expect to do. Is. Uh, if not peak type return false otherwise uh, plus plus current token and return true so expect is like we want this thing we don't care about it once we've got it, we just expect to have one and then go to the next thing. Now what this doesn't worry about is white space. So we need to skip all white space. So case white space, because our language so far doesn't care about white space. Um, Just go to the next token. And return true. I think Pen down, pen up, repeat. This also allows... The reason I use a stack here is it allows you to have repeat block in repeat blocks. So that if you look at commands again, we could have, as it's currently written, repeat five times, I don't know, do whatever. Pen up, rotate forty five, move fifty. So we can have repeat blocks in repeat blocks because every time we enter a, a repeat block, we add a new child. Now, when do we push the child? When do we pop the child? I mean, I don't want to pop it. Like that'll just destroy it. Yeah, I did say using stack was always going to be bad. Because we don't want to pop the stack. And we do. But... We want to keep the tree.
We want to keep the tree. Why is that red? It's not really a stack anymore. We want to keep uh, the current node Enter node, repeat. Um, yes, I'm doing it live. <laughs> uh, this wants to uh, add it to the back. So I want to leave the current node. And that will just uh, minus minus the current node. Uh, push back node. And plus plus. Current node and so how do we get the current node? When we leave the node So the current node is actually I want to enter node, do that, and then leave node. So make a new node, add the number, and then leave the node, but then the next time I feel that we don't need this. I feel like I'm making this harder for myself. I just need a root. But the context will just be one of the children of the AST node.
and here enter node No, because we need to we need to have a static context set. We need to keep track. just be context front and when we enter a new node we want to have Context dot back add child. No, context dot push back. Node and then we leave node. Oh, but we don't want to. When we enter the node, we need to have Context dot back add child node. So that'll be so we're going along in the route. We're going along down here. Be something broken in here at the start. Add child. Yeah. So we need to start off. Oh, we do. 
We can't add child. We need to say context dot push back. And then when we add a child, it'll be context dot back add child. Aren't we didn't we just do par we're doing pars repeat? How come there's pars repeat there and pars repeat here? So we pause, repeat, we check that we've got a number. If we don't, we say, oh, we expected a number. Otherwise, we make a new repeat node. We add the number to that node. We enter that node. And then we get a statement block into the current node. Ah, we need to leave node. If not that return false otherwise we leave the node so we enter the repeat node we add it as a child to the current node or to the current back which will be the top of the root and then we add it and because we added it as a child here when we pop it back from the context it's still got scope because it's in the parents list of children here that should all work <laughs> sorry there's a bit of a I mean this is sort of Tricky, not tricky, but um, I hate comments. <coughs> Sorry, I turned my head into the microphone, the cough. That's what you get for watching me think in real time. I wish I had pen and paper. I could show you what I'm, what I, what I just did, or what I think I just did. The thing is that you do want to have these, this nested right you can't just assume that you're always on the same level so you need to have nesting so it needs to be recursion so if you're in your a repeat node and you come along you get another repeat node you've got to enter that new repeat node pass the new statement block leave that node and you'll end up coming back here and parsing or ending the second node and you should end up with, we're gonna make this a, uh, if my logic is correct, did somebody say that sometime in the past? Um, whenever you get the root, say you've finished, we need to assert that the context dot size equals zero. One. All right. So that we build this big tree, push context, push context, push context. Um. I oh, don't give me the shits. Ah. Oh. You push context, push context. But at the end of the parsing, you should be, in a, and you'll have a, you know, whatever big context tree. But at the end of the parsing, it should all balance out, and you'll have one thing left in the context. So when you try to get the root, or when the translator tries to get the root, if there's not... Um, Uh, exactly one thing left in the context tree then um, we will fail um, unbalanced 
parse tree, whatever that means to the person who gets the error. And we'll return zero. Is fail not const? Fail should be const, even if it changes something. That means we need to make this both mutable. Look away, children, look away. It means fail can be const. It's semantically correct to have fail const. Because you're not changing the state really of the object you're just changing the failure conditions and whatever but that's not really changing the state or well, the useful state that's what mutable was for um i keep doing that okay go away so that was repeats which was tricky because we had to also deal with um Yeah, the parsing tree, basically. And that's the whole root of the whole problem. Or the root of the whole parser is how to deal with the parsing tree. And that's what this does. It gives us context as we move through the parsing to produce the abstract syntax tree. Now, there'll be other things that we will want to say how statement blocks for, like function foo or whatever if you want to go nuts and then it can you know function draw square or whatever right and that can draw a square I know I'm going totally overboard here but it's like the Lamborghini of turtle languages but my point is that um, you need to have context for all of these things. And yeah, nodes that you can enter. So when you enter the function, you've got a statement block. You can have repeat blocks and have nested functions. So we've skipped white space, we've got pen down, pen up, repeat, we need to worry about movement and rotate. Uh, pause, rotate. And move. Uh, rotate, move. What do you mean we don't have pars rotate? Pars repeat, pars move, pars repeat. Oh, that's where I got the two pars repeats from. Pars rotate. So, let's see if we can find pars move. And we'll need to have a rotate as well. Everything's downhill from here, guys. So if not peak number, uh, return fail angle expected. And this will just be uh, add child Well, we need to auto rotate equals AST node new rotate rotate dot add child next. That'll be the number that we're rotating. Next token. Um, what? From token to AST, ah, oh, it's add child, AST node, new, next token. 
we can just also have a uh, a child of a token just for my city and then just for a child of This and we can just return add child AST new token. So that'll just call the one down here AST node. And that just means that we could just say add token, add child of new token. And I think we did that somewhere else. Yeah, so we can just add child of pen down and pen up. It's nicer, isn't it? And we don't even need to have much nut. Much nut. No, sir. What's the next token return? Token. Add child token. Next token returns a token. Add child takes a token. Oh, it's fixed itself. No, it hasn't. From token to AST node thing. Oh, because we've got that as the actual adding it to the repeat. Okay, so we'll just. Because we're not adding this token to. the root. We're adding it to repeat. Actually, we could. Okay, in that case, we could do that and then add child next token. We don't even need to need, we don't even need repeat in this case anymore. How nice is that? So we enter the repeat node. First thing we do is we add it and then we add the statement block. Now, past statement block, we expect an open brace. Notice we don't actually add anything to the node if we get an open brace, we just fail. But then we pass statements and they will pass statements. So all of these will there be added, these add child will be added to the repeat node that's currently on the stack. And then when they finish, ah, when will it finish? It'll finish because this will hit a This will hit a open, uh, this will hit a closed brace. So pass statements. This will fail when it hits a closed brace. And then we can say we expect a closed brace. That should work. Because closed brace would be the reason that we just left the statement block. And then we return true. So for um, pars move. Oh, what happened here? Uh, rotate. A child. Oh, we can do the same thing. Uh, no, nah, because we're not really entering anything. So this will be AST node new next token, and that's all we need to do. 
I don't think that returns true or void. Yeah, so we just return true. So if we don't get a number, we fail. Otherwise, make a new rotate. Add the number to the rotate and then add rotate to our current um, sequence and this will be exactly the same except it'll be distance expected and this will be a new move and this would not be called rotate but move well, I could probably refactor that because anything that is different is the error message in the AST node type but that would be too complicated I mean it would make the code simpler uh, shorter but harder to parse pun intended so have we dealt with everything let's not get fancy with this just yet I will you can leave that as it is because we're not using this and quit is something that we haven't dealt with update case quit we can just I don't know, return... No, we don't want to return false. We just want to return true. Actually, no, we do want to return false. We just don't want to fail. So we come in, we run, we pass statements, we keep passing statements. We quit, we stop, and we will have succeeded. If any of these fail, they will fail, and the actual fail flow will be set by this. Or by, I think, expect. So this should be uh, return fail. Um, expected uh, this is where we want to have token type to string so we'll just because we don't not using streams yet for failure and we don't have token to string we're just going to fail with a really boring, unexpected token. And we'll put on the to-do list to uh, get root already has a body. Ah. Oh. Yeah, it does. And it's a return false. So, <laughs> uh, that all works in the test all pass so we're finished I'm joking um, we expect the parser to run um, AST node root equals parser dot get root require <laughs> require a root I'm not going to say anything else about that
Uh, AST, no, no, this is why I should use auto. Um, we require that root get children dot size equals zero one two three we require we're gonna make this uh, decline close brace open auto const children equals root get children we require that children dot size equals that we require that children zero dot type Ah, oh, it's an ASD pointer. Dot get type equals pen down. We require children one get type equals repeat. And we try that children two get type equals quit. And after doing all of that, we can do. Uh, standard array tokens will be the token and down repeat and quit and then uh, and we require that uh, a little bit the other way around. That's something too fancy. It should be quiz. Build that. And also, we can say auto repeat equals children uh, one. And we require. that repeat uh, has get children dot size should be two right and we're gonna have uh, define that open auto Repeat children is that require the repeat children's size to be two. We require the repeat children zero dot type dot uh, pointer and get type. That should be a number. And repeat children one get type will be rotate, and that should be repeat children that get type should be move. And we can even go further and require that uh, repeat children get type, uh, repeat children that dot get children dot get type uh, get children zero get type should be a number because that is the 
rotate and this is the move. So still the repeat children, uh, repeat children. Hang on. Yeah, repeat children to get the first type. Should only have one child. So we can assert that repeat children, get children dot size equals one. Repeat children two. Hang on, repeat children. No, it's got three children. The first type's a number, which is a number to repeat. So this is the uh, rotate command. And this is the move commands. <sighs> it's basically asserting the topology of the tree. Uh, and we actually run the parser. We'll set a breakpoint here because there's no way knowing this is working first time. I'm going to spend maybe 10 minutes debugging this. Um, Maybe even less, and just to see how we go. So, oh, I hate this. I'm going to set a breakpoint in the parser run and so on. I'm not concerned to even parse statements, even. Set a breakpoint there, we'll set a breakpoint there, we'll set a breakpoint there, we'll set a breakpoint there, there, and there, and run. So, parse statement, what is the current token type? I should have. I should have checked. So we don't have any tokens. Parser. Lex has got no tokens. Did I not run the Lexa? I believe I just made the Lexa and I didn't run it. <laughs> we require that the Lexa runs. Yeah, I mean we could do more testing because we haven't tested braces and stuff on Lexas yet, but uh, who cares. I just realized I've been going for two hours. It's funny when you... Where are we? So the Alexa ran, so now we can check that the Alexa's got actual tokens and so on. Pen down, white space, repeat, white space, number, white space, open brace, white space, rotate, white space, number, white space, move, white space, close brace, white space, quit. Perfect. F10. F10, current token type is pen down. Awesome. Make a token. Add child. Make a new one first and then add child. Now, do we have. We have got one context and we add a child to it. So now our context has a shared pointer which has one child which is a shared pointer which is a token of pen down <laughs> yeah. so pen down worked next statement next statement it should be white space ah where you don't go to the next token. So 
so that's going to be a mistake. Do we always want to Does add child always want to increment the token? No, it doesn't. So you want a method that adds the child and increases the current token. And we'll call it a pen child. And don't tell me I'm going to need, yeah, I will. Three sub pen child. And it's basically just add child and then increase the token. problem is, well actually, I don't think I feel comfortable incrementing the token number on add child necessarily. That was looking promising though. I think anything. So you can undo that breakpoint. We can take off that breakpoint. We pause, we go pen down. Next statement. Next statement. Current token is white space. Next statement. Next statement. Is a repeat. Do we have a number? No. So why don't we have a number? Current token is two. Ah, we don't increment when we, yes we do. So what is the current token? Current token is two, our tokens is white space number. Uh, so it's actually white space. We really should just remove all of the white space from because we don't care about white space. I don't know, I'm confident that it would work if once I remove white space. But I think after two hours, two and a half hours, who cares? And no one's going to be watching at this point. Um, it's funny that I didn't get... Look, I was two off, I wasn't one off. We could also have peak exclude white space. Or we could just strip all the tokens out of the token, all the white space tokens out of the tokenizer. And we could not add, let's just not add white space to the tokenizer. We could do that as well. I might leave that for the minute, all of that. We were getting, I think it's very close, but like I said, it's been two and a half hours. I'm confident that this is all correct. It's just the details of a few things. How many lines have we got? 150 lines, not bad for a parser.
It looks like it reads quite well as well. Um, that'll go away in a second. Um, that reads quite well. White space is an issue because we don't care about white space and it's getting in the way of our old parsing. But other than that, I think we're fine. We could refactor this, but again, I think it'll make it less readable. I like the way I dealt with the ASC node stuff. I think this is all good. There's no new and there's no delete anywhere. And you'll notice that there are no pointers anywhere except a pointer to a const reference, which is fine. In the entire code base, the only thing we've got is this. So there's no new, there's no delete, and there's no chance for memory leakage. So I'm going to call that a win, even though the part the test don't pass because of white space. And we added all of the PCH stuff. And so git add commit push add PCH add parser. Actually, we added multiple PCH and add parser with tests. Again, these are all going to get squashed, these commit messages. So it's no. Um, We'll take the essence out of the whole, all the commits and squash it all into one. What happened to my colors? Well, get long, give me colors. Get log. Oh well. So. Cool. Next time we'll finish the, um, the parser's finished. We'll just finish getting the test working for the parser by stripping white space. And then we'll move on to the next thing, which will be the translator, which I think will be so simple. We'll be able to do the translator and the executor in the one session. I think spending two and a half hours writing a parser is not bad from scratch. Um, and from memory and well not even memory just I don't know that's called a recursive descent parser by the way if you're curious all of these it's called recursive descent as opposed to an LOK or various other parser types these are the simplest parser type simplest to read simplest to write Uh, and we'll call that a day. Let's see, I shall save. And Thanks for not watching this far. <laughs> if anybody did, I'll send you 10 bucks. So if you leave a message, I'll, I'll PayPal you $10. <laughs> Cheers, bye.